Hey folks, honey, the world's perfect food. So what are the bees up to? What's the best honey for you to buy and use? And what's the difference between light honey and dark honey? Raw honey, processed honey. Do you know where your honey comes from? And we take a look at the cicada invasion that's happening mostly in southeastern Pennsylvania and further south. All that right now when we go out in the open. Out in the Open is brought to you by statewide abstract and national abstract companies. For 35 years, the Pocono choice when you need a real estate title research company. By Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms. By B&B &B Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Honesdale, a family-owned and operated new and pre-owned car and truck dealership trusted for the best price and service since 1970. By the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice of personal carry, and the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you will find the largest retail showroom in the Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. Hey folks, welcome to this edition of Out in the Open. I'm Alex Zedock. And I'm Joanne Dior. And we're coming to you from the Windy Mountain. <laughs> That's right, Windy. We're up here in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. and. Uh, we're going to talk about bees. Bees and the bees and are behind more us. More important, we're going to talk about the honey. The honey. I, I love that. Yeah, the honey I, and the wax. Yeah. Well, I, I don't eat the wax, but I love the honey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you probably don't realize what the wax is used for. But so many people use wax for so many different things. Now we like to buy beeswax honey, uh, right. beeswax candles, right? Uh, because. Um, you know, they're better for you. I mean, than they. Oh, you know, the other candles that you buy, right. the candles that are made out of whatever wow. other wax is, um, <laughs> puts this funny stuff in your hair. And if you're allergic to anything, if you don't know this, if you use beeswax mm -hmm. uh, candles, right. uh, boy, you know, you don't, you don't breathe in all that crazy nonsense that's in the other stuff. I mean, they cost a few bucks more. Believe me, they're worth it. They burn longer, they look nicer, and And they make you sweeter. You. That's right, they certainly do. Well, that's the honey we eat. <laughs> right. Now, we eat honey. We eat honey. We do. We, do. we go through Every a five-gallon bucket of honey about a month. I use it out of the jar. <laughs> well, a jar of honey, you know what I mean. But yeah. it's a container. Every day yeah. we have a, a little bit of honey every day. Yeah, we do. In fact, what we do is we mix honey and cinnamon together. And we right. have a teaspoon of that with our banana every morning. We figure yep. that keeps us healthy and strong, right? And that little piece of garlic we have with it helps <laughs> Well, <too>. that helps too. <laughs> hey, we're giving away too many secrets here on this show. Ooh, They're oh. going to wonder why we look so good. Take it and all that's back. that's the reason. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but we know we're, we're visiting with Dolores up here. Uh -huh. I'm going to introduce her in a little bit. But, um, you know, we've been buying honey for her for years and uh, a family of uh, long, long time right. honey producers. Right. And you, you want to know about your honey because you'd be surprised where some of your honey comes from. And that's not good. You've got to get the local stuff. That's and, why you uh, come here. Well, Very come good. here someplace in, you know, in eastern Pennsylvania. It doesn't matter where you go, southeastern Pennsylvania. You know, you just make sure where your honey comes from. Get it local. Best thing you exactly. can do. Absolutely. You've got a good show. And we also are going to talk a little bit about cicadas a little bit later. Now, that's a wild one. And that was a funny thing, wasn't it? We <laughs> yes, had to go a little bit south to find some cicadas, but boy, we found them. They but found us. You're going to love this information. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff, huh? It absolutely is. All right, folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Come enjoy great food and famous jug wings at the Jug Handles Creekside Bar. It's outside dining done right for these times with social distancing, sanitized stations, and a staff that's focused on your safety. It's always better at the Jug Handle, Cinnamon Sin. It's been years in the making. Tim Flanagan's landmark upland hunting masterpiece is finally here. This new coffee table style edition, The Birds of My Life, Grouse and Woodcock, is a lifetime of extraordinary hunting experience vividly brought to life by Wild River Press. At 11 by 8.5 inches, 
With 413 all-color pages, it contains rare photographs of grouse and woodcock, the result of spending thousands of hours in the field. This is the Upland Game Book to have and to give. Order your copy today directly from wildriverpress.com. Hey folks, we're talking hunting. We're talking with Dolores Matichka, and if we could find somebody who knows so much about honey, uh, Dolores is the person. Uh, Dolores has won so many awards in so many different places, and particularly when they had the farm show in, uh, in Harrisburg, she was a multi-winner down there. You had best honey, best this, best that, best yeah. color. It was you did a shock. all right. It was a shock, but really? it was so nice. It's so rewarding. How long have you been doing honey? Well, my dad was a beekeeper for 75 years, and so I was, you know, it was a part of my life. Uh -huh. But when I moved back here 20 years ago, my dad was getting up in age, and he was having a hard time. Plus, he had bees all over the place in Wayne County. Uh -huh. And so I was driving him around because he would no longer drive. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I said, that's it. We're bringing them to my house. So we brought them here. And I said, I swore I'd never have bees anywhere else. So uh, that was 20 years ago. And he passed away about four years after I started really helping him. It was just enough of an initiation that I <laughs> got, I just got, I was just entranced and got so passionate about it. Now, mm -hmm. not only do I do bees, but I do beeswax and I, you know, try to do all kinds of stuff and read up as much as I can. So now your honey is sold um, basically in the area, uh, in the Poconos, in yeah. the northern part mm -hmm. of the Poconos, pretty well, much. Well, really right around Honesdale. Uh -huh. Rent Equip has a lot of jars on the counter. They okay. sell like crazy there. And then the local market, uh, Sunrise Market, also sells honey from there. And then I sell a lot from my house. Now, you are or were president of the Bee Association mm -hmm. here? You still yeah. are or were you? Or no, it was, it's a two-year gig. Okay. So I did it for two years, and then another woman did it two years after that. And um, so we're having a hard time now, though, because of COVID. Uh -huh. We had to curtail our meetings completely throughout the summer. Okay. We did three outdoor meetings in the fall. And so now we've just started back up again. So and doing uh, meetings again. We'll meetings start again. Meetings mm -hmm. again. That's we've had great. two meetings so That's far. Great. Is it difficult to get it involved in beekeeping? There, uh, this is a great example. There were two people who are currently in the club uh -huh. that came to the meetings for two years before they ever, they knew they wanted bees, and they started coming and realized just what a commitment it is, mm -hmm. and just what you need to know to mm -hmm. really just I mean you can start out not knowing every well I still don't know everything but you can start out not knowing sure. everything and sure. still do it so these two people have now been in the club for two years three years they both got hives and they're amazing like they can call me and ask me any question and they're asking accurate questions where I know exactly what the situation is so I can give better advice so what's happening with the bee population you know we heard and read and saw and whatever some time ago that you know, the bees were in trouble, they were struggling, and the populations were going up and down, and they didn't know what was causing it, like the bats, you know, the same kind of thing. And Yeah, I mean, for us right now, it still is um, varroa mites, and it's the mite feeds on the bee, the, the larva, when it's inside the cell, and they also vector viruses. And at one point, there were two or three viruses. Now they're starting to find out that there's a lot more. But you know, so many universities are really doing incredible scientific research to figure out just exactly what's happening, and they're discovering new things. So there are a couple of things that are being created right now. They won't be on the market until mm -hmm. next year, mm -hmm. but it's really some promise for us to think that something will be able to give yeah. us some support and help out. We didn't have the bees. Without the bees, we don't get the pollen. We don't get. We won't get fruits, vegetables, anything. You right. Have the I, bees. You know, there are. You know, there are pollinators that are out there. Bumblebees, pumpkin um, pollinators, all different kinds of things. But if you take away the honeybee, the crop not only will go down, but they. I've just read recently that even the size of the pumpkins or whatever you're growing will go down so you have a less yield. Mm. And um, I think it's going pretty well, but boy, I just, I hope in my lifetime they figure out something. No, oh, I'm sure they will. <laughs> they figure out something for everything. So, you know, they're mm -hmm. gonna probably figure out something for that. Um, the, the, you know, you go into the store and you see honey on the shelves in all the supermarkets. Well, 
you know, I was surprised to find out some time ago when we really started eating more honey, that most of that honey comes from overseas, from China. Uh, and it, and it, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it says on the label, but basically they get it in big vats and, and you and, know. And, and some pretty serotipitious, serotipitious things have actually happened. Um, China actually got some places in Australia, imported the honey to Australia, then rebottled it and sent it as if it was from Australia. And this is going back a long time, like yes. probably 15, yes. 20 years ago. And they stopped most of it, but I've read a couple of things recently that we just have no idea how it's getting in here. It's uh, you know, one thing I read that really surprised me was the, the, the Canadian honey. Even some of the Canadian honey, the honey from Canada, I, I read was coming from China, and they were bottling it in Canada and calling it and, and something oh, to do with their labeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. something to do with their labeling that says honey from Canada, and it really isn't honey from Canada. It's, you know. Yeah, well, here locally in northeastern Pennsylvania, really Wayne County, that's the one I'm most familiar with, there are so many beekeepers now. Like, I go into the store, and I know four or five different, mm -hmm. especially health food stores, mm -hmm. four or five different people that are in our club or in the other club that are selling their honey. So people have it can take full advantage of knowing that the honey comes from here mm -hmm. and that it's not adulterated with anything. And I think that's all over, like, the eastern part of Pennsylvania anyway. I know, you know, you need to check it because, I mean, there's nothing to say that that if a beekeeper has a bad year and wants to keep going or something or do something like that, they could go out and get honey from someplace and yeah. repackage it. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, there must be laws against that or whatever. But. Yeah, there are, but there are ways to get around <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But I, I have had, I would say over the past five years, two years ago, I had over a ton of honey. Uh -huh. It was the most that I ever personally got without wow. my dad helping me wow. out. Wow. Last year was down quite a bit. Um, but you know, it was nice. I spent so much time with the bees last year because of COVID. I was just locked down at home yeah. and I really tried, you know, fixing my equipment. But the, um, oh, now I forget what I was going to say. Well, what and, I was going to ask you when you were saying that was that now we, we buy honey from Dolores. That's how we know her. And last year we got this phenomenal black honey <laughs> that oh, you had yeah. and we were, we were buying that. But there's light honey, medium honey. And last year you had that really dense black honey. Well, what's the difference in the, the honey structure? The dark, dark honey fr that I sell, uh -huh. I know only comes from Japanese knotweed. I wow. keep two hives on a rooftop of a business uh -huh. down by the river. And I put in there specifically because the whole entire river is yeah. filled with that yeah. Japanese knotweed. Yeah. So that I know for sure. Now buckwheat is also a very dark honey and it's really rich. I'm not so fond of it, but I know pe people will pay a lot more even for that. Wow. Um, there was one beekeeper in northern um, Wayne County that, that planted buckwheat specifically for that, but I don't think he's doing it any longer. Huh. He's really aged that? out of being yeah. able to lift stuff. Yeah. But then the light stuff, the earlier in the year, the honey is lighter. And as you progress through the season, it actually gets darker and darker. I have something. That must have something to do with the flowers and the pollen. It, absolutely, right? it know, has whatever. everything to do with the flowers. What? What do? What's the most prolific plant that bees get their honey from? Is it clover? It's clover, it? but as you can see, you look around here. We yeah. mow our lawns, and yeah. the guy, you know, it's filled with clover. And then the guy comes to mow our lawn, and that's it. Yeah. But you know, there are fields and stuff. But there are a number of things. Trees are something that really produce a lot more honey really? than people realize. Really? Chestnut trees, you know, and for a long time, everybody thought all the chestnuts were dead. Right. There are a few in the woods right here by my house. I keep my eye on them and I know when they're <laughs> blooming. Um, basswood is another one. Basswood is a huge crop. And uh -huh. I just, just looked this morning and the buds are all ready to go, usually the beginning of July. So this year, and I've done it other years, this year I'm gonna try to take honey off at the end of July. So that'll be all honey from the early side of the season. Then in the middle of the summer, I mean, there's the Japanese knotweed. That's in end of July, August. And then I have lots of milkweed around here. There's milkweed. But there's so many other things that really are, I found Honesdale to be a perfect place to have bees because you've got town flowers, you've got woods, you've got farmers. There really is a combination of all sorts of things. And we get some special honey when we go to Florida, that Tupelo honey. Oh, uh, you know, that, you that only grows in one area and we get that when we go to Florida. Hey, when we come back, we're gonna talk about a little bit more about the bees and the hives and uh, those kinds of things and uh, how you get the, uh, 
the the wax and do that and separate it and all that. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Real estate law is our business. And need an abstract title search company near Stroudsburg, Mount Pocono, Pocono Lake, Lake Naomi, Blake Slee. Call National Abstract at 570-646-4110. For offices near Scranton, Clark Summit, Lake Wall and Pompac, Lords Valley. And for general information, call 570-226-6229. For 35 years helping people with real estate, we're a Pocono experience you can't afford. Call 570-226-6229. Buck Hill Firearms, home of the $10 transfer, located at 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania. You never have to make an appointment. We're open 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Buck Hill Firearms is a full-service gun shop with on-site gunsmithing. Buck Hill Firearms NRA certified instructors are here to help you choose a gun that's right for you. Buck Hill Firearms, 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, right next to the Mountain Home Diner. Check out the website at BuckHillFirearms.com. Don't be shy. Stop by and see why so many folks rely on B&B for the best buy. Easy to find in Honesdale. We're making deals on all types of wheels. Brand new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, and the cleanest pre-owned vehicles in the land. For big choices and the best buys, head to B&B, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Honesdale, where smart buyers shop first. B&B, better and better. To translate a vision into reality is true innovation. At Car Arms, we not only manufacture some of the most advanced firearms on the market, we build assurance and reliability through a solid history of quality. We pride ourselves on offering concealable, performance-driven firearm systems that exceed expectations time and time again. Car Arms, American ingenuity at its finest. Hey folks, we're back. We're talking to Dolores Matichka and she is the, uh, I like to call her the premier beekeeper in the area here <laughs> because she does so much and knows so much and not just keeps bees and has other jobs, but she actually keeps bees and that's her job pretty much um, and studies them and knows everything about them. And as I said earlier, I, a, a major prize winner uh, in Harrisburg at the, at the show. And I don't even know if they're going to have the show this year, but they could at the mm -hmm. end of the year. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have it last right, year, but I'm right. I'm pretty sure they'll do it again this year. I hope so. Even our conventions we Farm have. Farm show, yeah. They'll do the, that in your conventions. The beekeeper conventions. I learned so much at those events, and I haven't gone for two years now. So, beside learning at the conventions, you know all this stuff, you have a beehive. And mm. the bees go out and they collect their stuff. They, and they The pollen, they put it on their legs. And they come back and they... They go in these little square holes or octagon, whatever Octo the holes. Yeah, octagon, octagon shape. Holes, yeah. Octagon shape holes, and they deposit this stuff. How does it become honey? Okay, there are a couple of separate things. Pollen is pollen they actually get from trees and stuff. Right. Then there's also nectar. So there are bees whose jobs that are to go out and just collect the pollen. And the pollen is actually food for the brood, for the baby bees, okay. for the larva. As soon as an egg is hatched, after three days, it lays down in the cell and the bees actually start feeding it right away. And it's a mixture of pollen and honey. It's called bee bread. Okay. And so they feed it all the time, or they feed it and then it turns into larva. And the bees keep feeding that into the cell so that that larva is swimming in the oh, food. Wow. And then after a certain amount of time, the larva is big enough and the bees put the cap on it. So that's the honey and the pollen to feed the bees. Then any excess honey, we put supers on top and there's, if, there's so much, if there's so much brood in the bottom chambers, they start storing the extra honey up on the top, and that's what we eventually take. So there's two completely separate things. But I've got so, much, so many requests for, for pollen, and people even ask for royal jelly, which is what the bees feed the queen to develop a queen. But I, I'm such a purist, I can't. You can't I, do that. I, I, can't, I won't do it. You won't do that. And so... But I also then, after all of that's done, there are different products from the hive. Like I could sell pollen, which I won't do, or I don't want to do. And then I also have, once we extract the honey, you slice the wax cappings off, and we, I end up with buckets and buckets of that. So I've got a um, uh, solar, yeah. solar wax extractor. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm forgetting my words. Solar wax extractor, melt down that wax, and then I have to, have to um, strain it so that all the little particles of everything come out. 
and I've got some beautiful wax. I've started stocking it up so that I can sell it and also want to, I've been researching trying to figure out how to make candles and exactly what I, where I want to go with that. So people use that wax to make candles, beeswax candles. They use it for beeswax candles. They also use it for furniture polish. All There's all things. kinds of things all for wax. So that all comes out of the hives. Yes. You know, uh, that the bees produce. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a, uh, a, an in-depth um, uh, process that the bees go through. So, oh, definitely. You know. The bees, the youngest bees are the ones that produce the wax. Once they get to a certain age, uh -huh. they stop producing wax and they move on to another job. So actually, the, the pollinization of the flowers is when a bee goes from one flower to another flower to another, and it carries a little bit of the pollen to each of Is that how the... Mm -hmm. is well, that they how gather, they, yeah, they, they, they gather it in their little pollen baskets on their hind legs. But some of that falls off from one flower to the next flower, and that's how the pollen yeah. is... That, that that's pollinization. how the pollinization takes mm -hmm. place. And so that's why it's important for the bees oh, to yeah. do this. Oh, yeah. And it's important for them to come back and see you. <laughs> yes. And you have hives all over, right? I mean, you can put a hive someplace. Now, you said something very interesting earlier uh, in our conversation uh, before we went on camera was that, you know, you lost a bunch of bees uh -huh. this winter and, and your hives just... You know, it was a hard winter because we had so much snow. But right. that, I was hopeful, thinking, this is great. It's insulation. Sure. I don't... But for whatever reason, most of them didn't make it. Mm. But I had one hive that overwintered, and it was blasting coming into the spring. It's, it's already, in April, it swarmed three times from the same hive. Swarms means that they get a new queen and they take off with her or what? No, the old queen, that's the, the mother of that hive, right. the bees start building other cells to right. raise new queens. That once they're close to being ready to hatch, right. that old queen takes off with a portion of the bees ah. and creates a new hive somewhere else. Oh, okay. Then the other queens that are in there start hatching. And if there's enough bees, that unmated queen will take off and some more of the bees will follow her. And then it happens, sometimes it happens again. It depends on how populated the hive is. But this hive was just amazing. It, after losing all of the other stuff I lost, it, j it was a joy. It just made up for it. So when that one separated, the first one separated, it went someplace and it said, let's call Dolores and tell us where she, <laughs> where we are. And she goes and picks them up, right? You, you get the swarm and bring it back? Or well, what you... the woman whose place that I keep this at, she has a flower garden and farms in its field. So she called and said, we've got a swarm. And they land in a tree that's... How about uh, that? For the past four years, they've landed in the same tree and it's at, eye le or at waist level. I just go and collect it, make sure I get the queen. First time I put them in a hive. Second time I went out, I didn't expect a swarm. I had to get a cardboard box from her shop and I shook those in a box. So I got two hives of bees from that one. And Phenomenal. Do you yeah. ever get stung? Yeah, but not usually. Not and usually. if I do, I, I don't like wearing big heavy gloves. I use the light nitrile gloves. And if it, you get stung, you can just pull the glove away and the stinger comes out. And it's that stinger that you want, that that venom sac that you want to get off. Right. And if you get that off right away, there, I have hardly any reaction at all. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you really, learn all kinds you know, of things over the years. We really appreciate you talking to us and giving us all this fantastic information about bees. Oh, because I love we it. like to know about I bees and the people it. like to know about bees. And the honey, you got to know where your honey comes from. Um, and I mean to be honey, you know, and, and you gotta, you got to be able to find out where it comes from. And you've got to go and, and even go to a, a beekeeper and, you can. and see I, the hives or yep. do something, but make sure it's legitimate. You know, with all the problems we've been having over the last 15 or 20 years, people are really stepping up to the plate, really planting things that will be helpful to the bees. I, I, you know, it's just humanity is... Fantastic. Is, yeah, huh? I can't believe it. Yeah, people want more information. How can they get it from your bee club here? In, the Wayne County Beekeepers, join. we have a website. Okay. Um, most of the information that's on there, though, is for us okay. to to know what's coming up, what meetings right. are and stuff. But there's contact but information. But people can come to your information. You can oh, come yeah. to your meetings oh, and, yeah. and ask questions oh, yeah. if they're interested. We, we meet the second Tuesday of every month, and okay. we've now moved our meetings to the Cooperage on Main Street. Okay. Okay. So you can 
come there and sit in on a meeting if you want. It's open to the public. I mean, you don't you don't have to join. There's also a Pennsylvania Beekeepers Association. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a website there that people can yes. get information if they live in a different area, not in Owensdale. I mean, if they live in Absolutely. southeastern Pennsylvania, where our show also airs, they can go. Oh, really? You know, oh, okay. to Lancaster area, and they well, can. Well, Penn State is such a huge place. So anytime you want information, you can go to the agriculture department there, and they will send. Yeah, they'll send they you to the right place. Get you to the right place. Mm -hmm. Dolores, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's been fun and uh, always fun talking to you about bees. I know. We I love it. it. Thanks so much. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Out in the Open is brought to you by statewide abstract and national abstract companies. For 35 years, the Pocono choice when you need a real estate title research company. By Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms. By B&B Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Honesdale, a family-owned and operated new and pre-owned car and truck dealership trusted for the best price and service since 1970. By the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice of personal carry, and the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you will find the largest retail showroom in the Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. Joanne and I went on a cicada search. Brood X. We couldn't find the bugs with big red eyes anywhere in the Poconos. We headed south and found a few in Bucks County that were emerging after sucking juices and eating sap from tree roots for 17 years. In their short five-week mating frenzy, we did strike a few that spattered on our windshield as we drove down I-95 through Delaware. Then when we got to Maryland, we struck Cicada Gold. They were everywhere many already dead on the hotel parking lot, but thousands were buzzing through the trees and in our hair and on our clothes. Well, just everywhere. Fun to watch and catch. When we got back to the car, we had to make sure we were not carrying any cicadas with us. But maybe that would be the only way some of our friends in the Poconos would see some. It seems, somehow, scientists at the National Forest Service got it wrong and marked Monroe County as a site where Brudex cicadas were going to emerge once the soil temperature reached 64 degrees. Actually, it seems it was a mistake in identity and mapping. Monroe County won't see millions of cicadas, at least not until Brood 2 type emerge in 2030. For our fellow fly fishermen who tied dozens of cicada patterns, well, you'll have to go south to match the hatch, or maybe they'll work on walleye, or save those flies until 2030. And then you'll have a chance to match the hatch. Well, Joanne, another great show. I told you we've got a lot of good stuff for you, yeah, see? Yeah, <laughs> I, like I liked all that stuff that Dolores told us about honey. Me you know, too. She's so, you know, so much information. And you know, this is not just coming from somebody that doesn't know anything about bees and honey. Right. I mean, Dolores studies the bees. I mean, she goes, reads all these research papers. Mm -hmm. And she's a prize winner. I mean, to have to go to Harrisburg and walk away with all those, with all those ribbons, right. you know, blue ribbons and all the ribbons for winning top prizes and the best color honey, the best honey, the best flavor honey, the best white, all these things. The so good, it's a good thing, thing was she got the ribbons, we got the honey. Absolutely. <laughs> and the bees are better off for it, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. they are, yeah. Certainly. Well, I, that was wonderful though, it I was. like that. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if the cicadas will ever come north. I, that, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, to the northern Poconos, you got them down there in Lancaster and you got them down there in Bucks County and through that whole area. And, and if we need to, we'll come and visit them, but I don't yeah. think we need them up here. We don't no. have time. We've got bees to deal with. Do you think it's going to rain? Well, sure. It rains, I, sunshine, snow. I mean, we get it all. This and is we love it. it. That's because <laughs> we are always out in the open. Absolutely.